Welcome to this episode of On Finding Peace, brought to you by Life's Journey Life Coaching. Our host, Chris Shea, is a counselor, nationally recognized speaker, and author on topics of guiding us to finding peace in our daily lives. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com. And welcome, everyone, to another episode of On Finding Peace. I'm your host, Chris Shea. And this weekly podcast focuses on discussing practical tips and techniques that all of us can use in life to help find our inner peace and our happiness. If you have suggestions for topics, let me know through social media, this site, or email me. All my contact information is found at my website, lifesjourneyblog.com. This episode is titled, The Secret to Overcoming Fear. It's easier than you think. In this episode, I share about my childhood fear of thunderstorms and how I overcame that fear to later become a storm chaser and amateur forecaster. For you see, when I was a young child, I was actually petrified of thunderstorms. I wasn't just afraid of thunderstorms or somewhat scared of thunderstorms. I was actually petrified of thunderstorms. Whenever a storm approached, I would try to find a place to hide, plug my ears, and pretend that there was no storm at all. You see, every time a storm came through, I imagined that that storm would have a tornado. And of course, that tornado would come and strike where I was. There's no basis for this fear and being petrified. For while growing up, I did not live in a tornado-prone area, nor was there ever a tornado in my area, nor did I know of ever anyone who was affected by a tornado. But in my mind as a child, I must have seen it, read it, heard it, that tornadoes come in thunderstorms. So I was petrified, and I had to do everything possible to pretend that there was no storm at all. In my fear, I needed to stop reality. I was told by my parents that thunder couldn't hurt me. It just sounded like it could hurt you. They told me that thunder was just noise. They also told me that thunder was just the sound of angels bowling in heaven. And although that thought of bowling angels conjured a comforting image, that very next lightning bolt would immediately take away what little comfort I had from that image. I am told, although I don't remember this happening, that I was nearly struck by lightning when I was quite young. I guess it's a good thing that I don't remember this, and this is probably the origins of my intense fear. But the story goes that during a thunderstorm, I opened up our refrigerator door, which is a very old metal refrigerator, just as a bolt of lightning had entered the house. The lightning from what we gather had hit the metal fence we had, and the metal fence was attached to the house, and I touched the metal refrigerator door at just the precise moment. But, as the story also goes, I was saved by being pushed away from the refrigerator just in time. But I still feel that that experience, whether I recall it or not, probably started this intense fear of being petrified of storms. 
Fear is a normal reaction. It's built deep within our brains to aid in survival. When we feel threatened, we will either flee or fight. And as a young child experiencing these storms, I chose to flee. It was a physical fleeing to find a spot to hide. And it was also an emotional flight where I was trying to block out and deny that the reality of a storm was happening. And as I grew into my teen years, still somewhat afraid of storms, I eventually made the decision to respond to my fear through fighting, not fleeing. My weapon? Study. I chose to study the weather, figuring that if I understood the dynamics of the storms, then they would no longer frighten me. And to this day, as an adult, meteorology remains a big hobby of mine. I now enjoy watching and chasing and forecasting storms. I long to see a lightning storm at night so as to watch the beauty of the bolts as they streak through the air. I no longer flee when the storm comes and pretend that the reality is not happening. So what has changed in me where I no longer fear these storms? For me, studying that which scared me gave me knowledge enough to no longer allow the storms to scare me. The key concept is that I no longer allow the storms to scare me. In other words, I am making a conscious decision based on my knowledge of the situation in the moment. As I work through the mindfulness of living in the moment, I can now make a decision based on what's happening in the moment and based on the knowledge and study of storms that I have to know that just because a thunderstorm is moving through my area does not automatically mean that there will be a tornado. And I also know through the study when there is a possibility of a tornado coming through the area. So by living in the moment, I don't have to fear the storm. By living in the moment, I can encounter the storm and understand whether this storm is a danger to me or not a danger to me. I don't need to classify every storm as a danger, for that's not living in the moment. How often along our life's journey do we allow fear to overcome us? How often do we become so afraid that we feel as if we're sinking? I think many of us, and myself included, fear the unknown. Change, even if for the better, is not always chosen, as change implies something which is unknown. It's not the not knowing which scares us. For once we step out of our comfort zone to take a risk, then the unknown becomes known. And as that unknown becomes the known, we once again can feel at peace in this new moment. When I think back on transitions in my life, to begin to understand that the fear that was involved in the unknown, as I studied and experienced and lived in the moment, my new unknowns, they eventually became knowns. And as I look back at my life, I can see the transitions of now noticing all the knowns in my life versus the unknowns. And that is the challenge, to remain in the moment 
and to learn how best to overcome that unknown. To know how to challenge ourselves to enter into life when we may, and usually are, at a loss of control. Fear and the sense of a loss of control operate together. We tend to believe that we are in control of our lives. Yet the reality is that we have very little control over our lives. The belief that we are in control keeps us calm. The less control, though, that I feel that I have, then there's more fear and anxiety that I experience. And if I'm experiencing more fear and anxiety, then the greater my impulse to either flee or fight. It's when I become comfortable with my reality in the present moment, a reality which is mostly out of our control, but once I become more comfortable with it, it lessens my fear, and in lessening my fear, I can now have a sense of peace through acceptance, for I can accept the moment and accept a lack of control, and accept a control where I have it. And where I have that control, I can take advantage of that and take action. For me, the action was to study the dynamics of a storm. The challenge is, for our fears, what do we need to do in action to come to an acceptance? And through that acceptance, we will find our peace. On our journey through life, to overcome our fear so as to live peacefully, I suggest that we reflect on a couple questions. And take a moment in your day to really focus on what is happening in your emotions, in your body, in your world around you. And as you do that, you might spend some time on these couple questions. Number one, how can I challenge myself to face the unknown? So what is it that I can do to make the unknown known? For me, that was study. But what other fears and unknowns are there in your life? And what can you do to make it more of a known? Question number two. From where does my strength come? I believe that's a difficult but essential answer. From where does my strength come? And for me, that strength to overcome the fear of thunderstorms and the fear that each storm was going to bring with it imminent death, where did my strength come to pick up those books and learn? Honestly, I'm not too sure. It may have had something to do with age. It may have had something to do with not wanting to be embarrassed. Maybe my strength came just from the fact that I was tired of fleeing. But for each of us, from where does your strength come to begin to learn about your unknown? Question number three. How can I learn to live in the moment? And this is a question that really could be asked in all of my podcasts and writings and speaking. How can we learn to live in the moment? It's not easy to quiet ourselves and reflect only on that moment without worrying about the future, without looking backward in the past. But I do feel, for many reasons, that that is essential for us to do, because it is only in the present moment where we live. And
And for me, when I equate it back to the thunderstorms, it was only in that present moment when those storms were happening that I experienced my fear. So it was only in that moment that I was able to overcome that fear. I could not overcome the fear of a future thunderstorm. And I couldn't go and relive the previous thunderstorms. But I knew in that moment of that storm, I knew what I could do. And the last question, what does acceptance mean to me? As I mentioned previously, to find that peace, we have to accept the unknown. Does acceptance mean that I agree with or I like it? No. I'm not at all saying that we accept life in that sense that everything that happens to us we must like. Not at all. But in living in the moment, we need to accept what is happening in the moment as reality of what is happening, and we have to accept and understand my reaction to what is happening in the moment. If I can accept what is happening, I find peace because I'm living in union with my reality. If I try to avoid the reality or change the reality to fight or flee, then I don't feel peace because I'm at war with, I am against what is happening in the moment. So for us to understand what is acceptance, and for me in the storms to understand that as this storm is happening in this present moment, I need to accept what that means and accept the beauty of a storm, accept the power of the storm, and accept the dangers of the storm. Because once I can truly accept it and respect it, then I know what actions I need to take in that present moment. So for me in this reflection, what I've learned is that the less mysterious that I am to myself, then the less fearful I will be. The more that I know of myself and of all that frightens me, then the greater the strength I will have to fight those fears. I would like to hear from all of you about your experiences. Please leave a comment on this site or go to my website for the access to all my social media links. I hope you found this episode helpful, and if so, spread the word by sharing with and telling your friends about this podcast. I encourage you to rate this podcast on iTunes or whichever service you use, as your ratings help to make this podcast more visible to others. Thank you, and have a very mindful day. Thank you for listening to this episode with Chris Shea. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com.